first sermon title out of the series it's called he can do it again come on say he can do it again he can do it again if you can believe again he can perform again we have the god of against all right dear children of god we hear about a lot of world records being set especially the olympic you know happening right now we hear about world records being broken all right every time a record is broken we always hear this comment this is impossible to break all right every time a record is broken oh, it's no chance this this record could not be broken again but then somebody comes along and breaks the world record again dear children of god if human beings are able to do this if human beings can break the records impossible records how much more can the lord break a record again in our life how much more can the lord do a miracle again in our life hallelujah because quite often we think our best season is over quite often we think or probably we blessed a missed our best opportunity or probably we are not going to have those times again all right if you talk to married people people have been married for a while not even for a while probably 2 years 3 years pastor they talk about those days as like boss only 2 years those days you know when we got married when we were love you know we oh those days we cannot if you're a believer i want to tell you your best days are yet to come my lord can give you back those best days again in fact better days in your life no matter what your age is today but then if for that to happen again you need to believe again you need to believe that god can do it again because you think oh the lord did it once that was when i i was very spiritual you know people talk to me like pastor those days you know pastor i am not able to pray like those days because those days i was a part of a youth group i was a part of a ministry i used to pray those days oh pastor if i pray i will bring fire from heaven oh gone are those days pastor today you know i am not able to pray like that but dear children of god it's the same god do you think god blessed you and did that miracle because of you no know, that fire prayer no he anyways wanted to do it for you even if you said lord just do it for me he was willing to do it for you you need to you know get to the top of your terrace and shout on the top of your voice in the name of jesus i pray that you will bring down the fire no the lord does not believe in graphics all right he just believes in a sincere heart so if you feel lord my best day of god i'm not praying like that i'm really not worshiping like i used to worship but still it's the same god he knows that he loves you and he also knows that you truly love him right so if you believe again if you expect again the lord is able and he's willing to do a miracle again in your life amen let's look into the book of luke chapter 5 verse 5 i've got a fancy number today 55 five. all right the story of peter so peter has been fishing for a while and jesus goes to him and then i want to read out this word peter says simon says master simon replied nlt version We worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing but if you say so I will let down the nets again come on say again Lord I've done it all day nothing's happened if you say so say if you say so don't look at me tilt your head above and say Lord if you say so if you say so I'm willing to do it again all right oh we know about Peter one of the great apostles apostle to the Jews Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, apostle to the Jews, part of uh, Jesus' inner circle. James, John, Peter was a part of the inner circle. The guy who betrayed Jesus thrice, the guy who cut off a ear uh, from the soldier, uh, the guy who stood up on the day of Pentecost, the one to be anointed, the first guy to preach the gospel, the first guy to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. All right, great guy. And we also know that Peter was martyred. All right, do you know? Do you guys know? Peter was martyred. Uh, Nero's reign, and in fact, when he was when he was you know crucified on the cross, Peter said, "I'm not worthy to be crucified on the cross." You know, so invert my cross. There's also another historic detail which says that you know, Peter, while he was doing ministry, he was doing it along with his wife. Do you know that? Right, because Paul writes also. You know, Peter has this you know privilege of taking his wife along. I am single, and yeah. So the history says that. Peter was doing ministry along with his wife and his wife was martyred in front of his eyes. She was crucified before Peter was crucified. All right? And that's what uh, William Barclay writes. You know, he sees a painting of uh, Alexander and the painting shows that Peter watching his wife being crucified on the cross. And uh, at the time Peter rejoices and he says, okay? Remember the Lord. Okay, when he says rejoices, he's rejoicing that his wife is dying for Christ. There are some people who will rejoice if your wife goes through pain. That's a different story. I'm not talking about the same. This guy rejoices because she's dying for Christ. 
background of Peter. Now, when Jesus speaks Peter, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And, and for people who don't know, it was Jesus who named him Peter. He was called Simon. When uh, Jesus met him, John chapter 1, verse 42, he says, his brother brings him, Andrew brings him. Andrew, who's the disciple of John, brings Peter. And then he says, Simon, I'm going to call you Cephas, okay, which means the rock, which is Peter. Now, on one day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on, pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. And he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. This is a known story. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. My first point for today is, your empty moments and your moments of failures have a purpose in God's plan. Amen. Your empty moments and your moments of failures have a purpose in God's plan. Now Jesus looks at the boat and the boat empty. The empty boat signifies that somebody's worked hard and still there's not been any results. There's been no results. He sees the empty boat. He also sees the empty nets. And probably there were empty baskets as well. Where they used to fill the fish. Alright. Okay, when we talk about empty baskets, we remember feeding the 5,000. Where, you know, we say after the Lord fed all the 5,000, there were 12 baskets full of fish and bread. But then I don't know where those empty baskets came from. I don't know whether people start attending meetings with empty baskets. Alright. Uh, feeding the 5,000 also reminds us about empty purses. These guys, you know, the disciples come and say we don't have money. All right? Whenever there is a kind of emptiness in your life, there is a purpose and plan for you when you go through that emptiness. Amen? I know it, it's tough. They're like, Pastor, what do you say? Me being empty, does it have a purpose? And even if it has a purpose, I don't like being empty, Lord. All right? But then, dear children of God, this morning I want to tell you, your emptiness or your failures have a purpose in God's plan. And most importantly, your emptiness is God's opportunity to do the never done before. Let me repeat that for you. Your emptiness offers an opportunity to God to do the things he has never done before. I'll tell you why. Chapter 5, verse 3. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. All right? This was never done before. All right? Nobody has used a boat to preach. All right? This is the first time a boat is becoming a pulpit. All right? A fisherman is becoming a disciple. All right? Because it was empty, God was able to do the never done before. All right? Imagine the first time Jesus getting on the boat and preaching, that becoming the podium, the pulpit, the altar. But... Here, when you look at this emptiness, your emptiness gives space for God to work. Do you understand this? See, I've gone to certain houses, you know, for house visiting. And you're like, you go inside, and uh, you're like, you turn any side, your knee will get hit, your foot will get hit, because the house is just filled. And they will also say, Pastor, we've also ordered another recliner or a, or a fridge. I don't know, probably they'll put all the goods inside the house and they'll say outside the house, I don't know. So much stuff. All right? Dear children of God, at times we have to give, there needs to be empty space for God to work in our life. We are always busy. We are always preoccupied. And people come and tell me, I can't listen to God's voice. I cannot hear him speak. That's because it's full. Full of worries, thoughts. All right? Too much of imagination. All right? You're not able, not able to hear God's word at all. And you're like, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And sometimes God has to pull out your jobs. Probably make you sit in a corner for you to listen to God. Or even though you listen or not, you start pestering God. God, talk to me, God, talk to me, talk to me. Or you start pestering the pastor. Pastor, can you pray and tell me? Dear children of God, your emptiness gives space. There are times you have to clear your schedule. There are times you have to clear your space at home. All right? See, I still, I like my Hindu friends. Because whenever they build a house and build a house and they invite me, they, you go there, they have a puja room. They have a room for prayer. But most of the Christian houses which I go to dedicate pastors, this is a living room. Oh, that's a 75-inch TV. Right? And that's the master bedroom. But where is the master's bedroom? 
I hardly seen any prayer room or room dedicated only for prayer in a, in a house. It's like two bedroom flat. Pastor, already we don't have budget to buy two bedroom flat, no, sir. You're talking about another prayer. That's another 200 square feet or 100 square feet. Come on. Do you know how much it's going to increase my EMI? Boss, give space for God. When you give space for God, that emptiness, He comes. He makes it his pulpit. He makes it his podium. He starts to give out sermons. You will have testimonies being preached from your emptiness. Amen. Hallelujah. Empty wombs will become a pulpit for the Lord. Your empty womb is going to become a pulpit because from there a sermon is going to come about how the Lord gave you a child and blessed your child. Amen. Hallelujah. I was talking to one of my colleagues yesterday. So I work for this advertising firm, right? So I was talking to one of my colleagues. So he's having, a, he's going to have a baby, all right? He said, Pastor, the delivery is on most probably the seventh. So I said, if your wife can kind of bear the pain and stretch it till 12 o'clock midnight, or, and if your baby's born on the eighth, it'll be eight, eight. It's a fancy number, you know? Whenever you mention the birth date, it could be eight, eight. He was like, Pastor, I've been waiting for seven years. We've been married, I've been waiting for seven years to have this child. Wow. So, I was like, and, and immediately I started talking. I, I know a lot of questions you couldn't answer. A lot of places you want to avoid because wherever you go, people want to like, when are you going to have the child? When, are, when is the good news? You'll have to tell them, if you shut your mouth, that'll be the good news for me. If I, when the day I stop seeing you, will be good news. Right? When are you going to get married? Always about other people's life. What's next? Oh, final year, right? my, my daughter's, I, I had this problem and my daughter was in the 12th standard. What is she going to do? Now, now she's in the final year. Again, like, what is she going to do? I'm like, at times I, I question my wife. I, I think we are okay parents, right? Because we are really not worried, but the others are worried. <laughs> right? Everybody are bothered about others' emptiness. But you children of God, I want to tell you, that's where the best sermon is going to come out. My Lord's going to make it a preaching place where your emptiness is going to birth sermons and the Lord will use it for your glory, His glory, and the never done before will be done in that empty space. Come on, if you can clap your hands, do it well for the Lord. You're doing it well. All right? Don't be massaging your hands. You're doing it for the Lord. Give a round of clap offering for Him. Clap Him in advance. Thank Him with gratitude that my Lord will change my emptiness into a testimony. And the best part is Jesus says, come on, Peter, push the boat inside. Your emptiness can make you and Jesus a team. Do you know that? This guy becomes a team with Jesus. Peter's like, or oh, together, oh Lord, are we doing this together? Come on, we're doing this together. Why? Their boats were full. Your boat was empty. So we're becoming a team right now. Amen. Imagining having Jesus on your team. You walk into your office, your boss is there ready to fire and you're like, man, be careful. Look at who's working with me. He's on my team. Quite often we forget that Jesus is on our team or in fact, we are on his team. Whenever you walk into a place of disappointment, frustration, you walk into a place of fear, anxiety, when you're paranoid, you need to understand that he's on my team, man, and he's going to do it together with me. All right? It's not that Jesus cannot do it with you. But he does not want to do it without you. Amen. Can I repeat this for you one more time? It's not that Jesus cannot do it without you. But he does not want to do it without you. He wants to involve you in every miracle he performs. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I was like, Lord, I was, I was just reading the Bible, giving the Lord a high five. Thank God we are on the same team. Amen. Though I'm a bad team member. Though I am the weakling in the team, all right? But still, Lord, I'm on your team. Now, next important point. Once you've heard his word, or once you've received his word, he will want to test if you believe what you received. All right? If you receive his word, okay, for all those people who've been saying amen and hallelujah, for all the words you've said amen, he's going to test you for that. Right, because that's what's happening to Peter. Now, Peter is like leaning onto the board and listening to the sermon. Wow, Jesus, hallelujah, amen. Come on, Jesus, preach it, preach it. <laughs> you know what happens? When he had finished speaking, he looked at Simon. All right, he said, now, Peter, you've been listening to the sermon. Go out where it is deeper, 
let down your nets to catch some fish. Right? All this while Peter was cheering Jesus, saying in him, oh, what a man of God. Oh, profound teaching. What words of faith. Amen. Believe it. And Peter did not know all that preaching was not for somebody. The Lord was actually preaching to Peter. Peter was thinking the Lord was preaching for somebody else. Have you been through this? It's like you receive a word and you, you, you tell your neighbor, no, this word is actually for you. I know what you're going through. This is for you. All right? And all those, for, for all those people who forward WhatsApp links and messages, you know what? I went through the sermon and suddenly God reminded me of you. All right? So I've sent you this sermon. And you send the links and the Bible verses. And what I hate is people send my devotions back to me. I'm so afraid to give my phone number to anybody because from morning till night, it's not the good morning message, it's all the Bible verses. Right? So Peter was enjoying God's sermon. Little did he know that once Jesus finished preaching, Jesus said, boss, thank you for all the hallelujahs, thank you for all the amens, but this was for you. Now push the boat inside. Peter was like, I, I never knew that I was a part of this plan. Did you look of this is this morning the Lord is telling you? You've been receiving God's word. You've been saying a hallelujah. You've been saying an amen. In fact, your Bible has those notes where you mark this promises for me. Okay, you have some bookmarks on your phone and you've, you've copied some verses. The Lord is saying, if you believe that, I'm going to test whether you believe those words. All right, hold on to those words, okay? Don't, 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 don't give up because I want to test whether you really believe it because I'm about to do it in your life, amen? I, yesterday, I think I, I saw a, a posting in Instagram or Pinterest. I don't know, okay. Let's leave the source. So it said, if plan A doesn't work out, don't worry. There are other 25 alphabets there. So you can try different plans. For me, with the Lord, there's only plan A, plan Almighty. And if you believe, and if you believe and have faith in the Almighty's plan, he says, if you can believe again and try again and let down your nets again, the Lord says, I will do this miracle again in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. With God, there is no plan B, plan C, plan D, no. There's only one plan. There could be 26 alphabets, but there's only one alpha. Amen. There's one alpha, one omega, one almighty God whom we serve. And he does not keep changing his mind. He does not alter his plans. And he wants to tell you, I've got this plan and I've got you. I'm going to do this. All I want you to do is just believe in this plan. He performs the greatest miracle when you're most exhausted and disappointed. Okay? I want to repeat this for you. The Lord performs His greatest miracle when you're most disappointed and you're very exhausted. All right? Have you been through this? Where like, we're like, Lord, I'm too tired. I cannot take it anymore, Lord. I've tried many times. I'm exhausted and I'm really, really disappointed, Lord. That's what Peter says. 5-5, five, five, Luke 5-5. Five, five. Master, Simon replied, we worked all, we worked hard. Come on, listen to these words. We worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. Okay? We worked hard all night, which means I'm exhausted, Lord, and I did not catch a thing, which means I'm disappointed. Leave on a shark. All right? At least a small goldfish Something, Lord, for to, you know, to, to inspire, to encourage my faith. You could have at least given me, you know, a small fish. No, I didn't catch a thing, which means I'm really, really disappointed after working the entire night. Have you heard these words? Have you mentioned these words? I've said these words. I'm really disappointed. You look at our children, we look at people and say, I'm disappointed in you. All right? Or, or most often we're like, Lord, I'm disappointed, Lord. Because I thought this was the moment you're going to perform that big miracle. This morning, there was one guy who walked to me, first, first service. He's an unbeliever. He's accepted Christ, new Christian. I don't know who brought him to Christ, but I don't know what they've told him to bring him to Christ. All right? 
I'll tell you why. Because he came to me and he's like, Sir, I want you to pray. Sure. What is the prayer? By next year, I should become a doctor. As in, I should be a doctor next year. Okay, I said, oh, probably you're in the fifth year or you're, are, you, are you interning with any hospital? He's like, no, 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 I'm about to take my NEET exams. I'm preparing for my NEET exams. By next year, because uh, I heard that Jesus can do the impossible. Yes, boss. I'm really scared about those people who are evangelists who bring people to Christ. I don't know what they do to sell Christ. All right? Especially, you know, I've stopped giving baptism classes. But then when I, when I used to take baptism, I've in fact stopped giving baptism also in church, in our church. Because there are people, because there are, there are weeks which I'm not available, where I'm not available. And I like, we want to get baptized only by Pastor Reno Kumar. I said, you want a good life? Why you want me? <laughs> right? So I've stopped giving baptism. In fact, when, uh, and I also had this complaint from our church members, pastors, people who attend your baptism class, half of them don't turn up for baptism. Because... I actually discourage people because when they, when they come to take baptism, they come with this idea of like, if I get baptized, I'll get this blessing. So far, I'm not married. I'm believing that once I get baptized, I'll get married. I don't know where Jesus does this. Is, does this baptism, marriage, services, baptism, matrimonial. I haven't got a job. I'll get baptized. I'll get a job. I said, boss, if you're getting baptized for a blessing, don't ever turn up. You love Jesus, you want to obey Jesus, you want to become a disciple, you want to please Jesus, get baptized. Otherwise, like, you're looking for a business transaction. So I discourage people. Here, you've tried many things. But Jesus is saying, you're exhausted, right? You're disappointed. You've tried counseling, you've tried medicines, you've tried many passes. And you know what? Peter uses the word we have worked all night, which means not just me, others have also tried together, right? I've prayed, Brother Monsi has prayed, I've also sent an email to Benny Hinn, I believe he has also prayed because I got an auto reply saying, we have received your prayer request, we are praying for you, so I believe he's also praying. So many people have prayed and it's still not worked out, right? I don't know, my mother's not alive today. But then the more she was praying for me, it seemed like I've never changed. Have you been through this in life? All right, you start praying for something and it becomes worse. Oh, I've been there. I, I, I was like, Lord, I think I shouldn't have prayed for that. Because it was better before I prayed. Right? It's like, you've tried, you've exhausted. And this guy says, we have worked all night. In fact, Andrew and my people around me also, we have toiled all night. But Lord, nothing's happened. Dear children of God, if you're going through those moments, I want to tell you, when you're most exhausted and disappointed, that's when my Lord comes down from heaven. He walks on your behalf. He does a miracle. When you are about to give up and you say, Lord, I'm tired. He says, no way. This is when I'm going to perform that miracle. Hallelujah. Now, why are you clapping as though you guys are exhausted? If you want to clap, clap with all energy and say, my Lord is about to perform a miracle. Just be excited, guys. You're probably even running out of options. This morning, I, I, the second service, I listened to a testimony where a lady who was not believing in Jesus Christ, she started being an online member, watched her sermons. Twelve years, she did not have a child. All right? Her brother turned up today to tell me that I thought she had conceived. But her brother told her to tell me that no, she conceived and the baby is born as well after twelve years of not being out having a child or after giving up all options, but then believing in Jesus. Come on, guys. When you hit the women, you think, Lord, I'm exhausted, Lord. I'm just tired. I want to give up. The last point for today is everything could be the same, but your obedience to God's word will have different results. Everything could be the same. Because quite often when we think the Lord's about to perform a miracle, we're like, oh, we expect great changes. But the Lord says, no, 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 everything's going to be the same. But then, this time if you obey, if you believe, results will be different. Right? Now, and about this time, the nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. They got into, they dropped the nets, they started fishing. 
Probably if it was me, I would have said, Jesus, I'm willing to go out there. But then, Lord, can we use another boat? Probably this boat is not so lucky. Or probably, Lord, can we use a different net? I think this net is probably worn out. It's old. Okay, that's what people come and tell me, no? They, as soon as they hit 40, all right, they were like, Pastor, why Namari feeling? I am getting old, Pastor. Just 40. All right? And they make me feel old. The net is old. Lord, probably the net is old. Probably the fish is, probably the fish is, the fish is coming out of the net, Lord. It's not able to hold the net. Can we change the net? No. Or probably we said, Lord, you know what? Whole night, I fished in the Sea of Galilee. Can we change location? Can we go to another sea? Like I heard that that sea's got better fish, Lord. All right? People who cannot kirchify in India, they feel, that's my destination. <laughs> I met these students who will not be able to cope up earlier. Pastor, the education system in India is not good, Pastor. So I feel Australia is the place, or America is the place where I should study. Because I want to tell you, the Lord does not want you to quit before he performs a miracle in the same place. Amen. You know what? You can probably shit, but after the Lord honors you. Most of the time, we've been quitters. We want to move places. We want to change boats. We want to change nets. It's like, oh, Lord, this is not lucky. That's not lucky. Let me change this. But the Lord says, it could be the same boat. It could be the same net. In fact, it could be the same empty sea. But that is where this time, if you obey and have faith, I want to perform a miracle in your life. Your results will be different, though it's the same place. Hallelujah. It's the same place. Because quite often we're like, oh, I have a problem in this place. I want to quit the job. I have a problem in this locality. Let me change the locality. All right. As soon as you get married, now people, one year, two years, this is not what a work pastor. Marriage, I want to give up. I still remember, you know, my mom praying, praying, praying that I will change. I want to tell you all those prayings, all those praying parents who've been praying for your children, you've not seen a change. You know what? This time, it's going to be different. Amen, hallelujah. For all those parents who don't have children and you're praying for the children, no, this time it's going to be different. Hallelujah. We walk by faith and not by sight. You know, Noah built the boat without even seeing the rain, without even hearing about the rain. Nobody's experienced rain till then. But then he built the boat without seeing. Now, I want to encourage you. Yeah, the same location, same boat, same net, same body. The Lord is going to perform a miracle. This time the results are going to be different because the Lord is saying, have faith. Peter, you've been listening for this preaching for a long time. Have faith. Go out there. And the nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. All right. Peter was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught. As were others with him. His partners, James, John, sons of Debbie, they were all amazed. Look at all these people, you know. They were all amazed with what's happening to Peter. Right? Dear children of God, God will make sure that the people around you see the work of his hands in your life. So that's why you have to go back to Sea of Galilee. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't go to another sea. You need to go back to the Sea of Galilee because all your friends there who saw your empty boat, now they need to see that your boat is going to overflow. And you know what happened? They brought their boat also and your blessings start to overflow into their lives and their boats also start to overflow. Hallelujah. That's how God needs to bless you. Your blessings need to overflow into others' life. These, like, they were so amazed. And I love the way what Peter said, you know. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, 5.8, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I am such a sinful man. If it was you and me, after this miracle, we would have probably said, or I would have probably said, Lord, can you come every alternate day? Because Jesus, if you come every alternate, at least for the next two months, I will be able to know, finish all my home loans, my personal loans, my credit card bills, all of that, I'll be able to, I'll be set for life, Jesus. Just two months, every alternate, at least twice a week long. But then Peter, after experiencing the biggest miracle of his life, his business was about to change, all right? Probably if Jesus was around him, this guy could go in for an IPO. 
all right later go and you know publicly declare all this his business could have skyrocketed but this guy had a change of heart did you know do you know what happened everybody was thinking that the miracle was happening outside but jesus was performing a miracle inside peter amen hallelujah this morning when you're looking for miracles outside the lord is saying i'm performing something inside you i want you to be the miracle says the lord hallelujah peter never knew that there a miracle was happening within him amen now jesus looks at him jesus replied to simon hey don't be afraid from now on you'll be fishing for people in hebrew the word is called zogrio z o g r e o which means to catch alive catch fresh he's saying from now on you're going to catch people alive right from now on your career is about to change from now on your future is going to be different you have a different job title your kpis your kras are about to change your job responsibilities is not going to be the same from now on you're going to catch people alive dear children of god your emptiness can bring a career change in your life hallelujah you're going to be fishers of men in fact jesus tells him you are going to be the miracle in fact he tells him you are the miracle come on tell your neighbor you are the miracle you are the miracle come on tell them you are the miracle right i know you guys have this mind voice saying marrying you itself was a miracle giving birth to you was a miracle <laughs> all right hmm? surviving so long is a miracle but i tell you the biggest pastor biggest miracle is me being the pastor <laughs> that's the biggest miracle in my life <laughs> or the miracle in your lives as well peter was thinking the lord was doing a miracle outside but the lord was making peter the miracle dear children of god i want to tell you your emptiness is going to make you the miracle you're exhausted you're disappointed you are tired you're too tired there are times when i i feel more tired when people come and tell me pastor how come you do all this pastor don't you feel tired and like boss yeah i do there are people who ask me what do i what do i eat I do feel tired. This morning, I felt like I was a child. I didn't want to get up off the bed and see your faces today. But then, when I'm most tired and most exhausted, that's when the Lord delivers the best sermon out of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I want to tell you this morning. You're looking at the miracles outside, but the Lord's working inside of you. there's a big transformation coming your way from this emptiness you're going through 